morning, folks. My name is Meg Kruger. I'm the content specialist over here at Pioneer Athletics, and I'm joined with my friend, uh, Pete Tebow. Good morning, Pete. How are you? Oh, I'm great, Meg. How are you? I'm, I'm outside, and I'm doing a little bit of work today. That's all we can ask for. <laughs> um, I'm actually uh, the turf supervisor here at the Noble and Greeno School in Dedham, Massachusetts. And uh, we're just trying to get a little bit of work done where everybody's really not allowed to do any work. Yeah. And it looks like you've got some rainy conditions there today. Yeah, we're just trying. We're only we're only supposed to be here a couple of days a week. Uh, myself and Dylan, who managed the athletic fields, we split the week. So I'll be here two days. He'll be here three and then vice versa. Okay. So is that how you guys are kind of staying safe? There's only going to be one of you at the facility at a time? Yeah, actually, the director of facilities uh, came out with a list of our do's and don'ts, and we're all now assigned rakes, shovels, everything. Oh, so wow. uh, everybody has their own stuff, and uh, that way we're all safe, and he doesn't want to see anybody working really together. Okay. Uh, so and and out on the fields, our work is kind of separate. Like I'm in the tractor today, and Dylan's out mowing. So uh, we're not really close together. But he's got his own mower. I got my own tractor. <laughs> Crazy times! Can you ever imagine this would be what your spring looked like this year? Uh, well, it's been very difficult. Speaking of that, because generally we're under the gun with uh, sports and everything, and now it's how do we make sense of the day? Yeah. If you follow saying because we're usually just uh everything's run through athletics and uh you know baseball softball lacrosse everything's going all the time and now nobody's here it's kind of weird it's eerie definitely so how does like your new day in the life kind of compare to what a typical spring day may have looked like last year so um culturally we still have to manage uh, we, we did do our spring fertilizer application and that was right before everything kind of shut down. Mm -hmm. And, uh, now, uh, where we don't have athletics, we can get in, we can do some aerating, we can do some real aggressive, uh, field repair work without worrying about interfering with the athletes. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they'll come back and maybe we'll get a, a week or two of them running around. But, uh, mm -hmm. the philosophy for the school has been that, We'll manage the space, not at a very high end, but so that way when everything resumes, we're not working for weeks trying to get it back. Definitely. So a nice silver lining to focus on, just that you're able to have that extra time or maintenance time on the field to get those projects done that may not have happened this spring. Correct. And uh, we're not here for a very long day, uh, five, six hours. Um you know, and we just got to kind of prioritize what we feel as though is uh, important. And it's a conversation between my facilities director and Dylan and myself pretty much every day on what we want to try and tackle. So what have been some of the top priorities now that you kind of have a cut schedule, cut uh, crew? What have been some of the top priorities to make sure you guys get done during this time? So uh, we're right now managing, trying to recover from our fall sports. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to pull all our turf blankets and now we're mowing. Um, and we're actually, because of the fertilizer, we're needing to mow. Um, the grass has really started to grow. So mowing is just a maintenance thing at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but where we're, we've done some aerating. And uh, we're going through campus areas where campus life generally kind of creates a lot of trouble. Uh, we're now going into those spaces as well. Awesome. Uh, so it's been good, but at the same time, we're only here for a couple of hours. It's hard to kind of go at the same pace. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. And how are you kind of managing the public? Um, you know, you're the only there for a couple hours to make sure people aren't on the field. But have you run into any issues where maybe residents of the community or um, people from the school are coming onto the field thinking it's fair game? Luckily for uh, the world that I live in and work in here, I don't necessarily live on campus. But the director of facilities lives on campus, as does Dylan and also the athletic director. So 
as far as field use and that sort of stuff, they're like the police right now. They're mm-hmm. all on their dog walks, kind of checking the space and making sure if there are people that it's one family and it's not a congregation of people and doing the right thing. But for the most part, they've sent out uh, email to the community that, mm. you know, the school is closed. So if you happen to need something, come on by, but it's not here to kind of hang out. In. Definitely. So yeah. how important has communication been through this process? You know, with you and your crew, you and your community, you touched on it a bit. How important has that kind of, been for this really uncertain and different situation? I think uh, com- communication is all we really have right now. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're just kind of talking through our own thoughts. Um, you know, every day changes, uh, you know, where I may leave today thinking that Monday will be in a certain direction and who knows what may, may happen. So it's kind of wild as you talk about the uncertainty, it's it's uncertain every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, and for me, uh, I get some insight because my wife is a intensive care nurse. So she's on the other side of everything that we're experiencing. So I can kind of hear from her a little bit as well. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. How are you kind of balancing the stress of family and the uncertainty with your wife's job and what you also have to do on the field? Oof. <laughs> That's a good question. I did put a lot of thought into that too. And, um, it, it's just kind of wild, you know, I just been immersing myself in my family. Um, cause that's really kind of all you got is a support, you know, mm-hmm. it, uh, work. I'm definitely trying to get my work done, but luckily at home, I got a couple good projects that, uh, kind of consume my time and mm-hmm. kind of can help bring some of the family in as well. So it's, it's tough because it is uncertain for everybody. Definitely. Well, our thoughts are definitely with you and your family. We hope the best and that you all are able to stay safe and healthy during this time. Um, You know, how are you staying healthy physically during this time when we're all kind of cooped up and also on the same tier, how are you staying healthy mentally? Um, Geez, that is a good question. You know, I'm not moving as quickly as I once was. So once the race starts, I'm sure I'll figure out that really I'm not as healthy as I once was. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know I'm eating well. Uh, I do like to cook, so we're all eating well anyways. Um, but as far as like mental health and physical health, we're getting out. The weather's starting to break, but you know, I have a decent sized yard so we can kind of fool around outside in our own space. Um, but it really feels like you're doing something wrong if you go outside. So yeah. it's hard, it's hard for all of us just to try to, you know, even the dog, you know, he one, he's tired of going for walks, but <laughs> it's hard on everybody, you know, because we're, we're, we're just kind of stuck together in that uncertainty, yeah. you know, and, 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 and I myself is talking to other sports managers. Uh, it's hard too, because everybody across the country, you know, the closures have happened at different stages and, Mm -hmm. everybody's wondering what's going on definitely and I know you've got kids so how have you kind of managed their expectations or managed maybe the stress that they're feeling and trying to keep positive with them so it's funny um I talked to the 11 year old last night we hung out a little bit and uh, I asked him what was cooking in his head with the whole story and he said that all him and his buddies are treating it like a sad day (laughs) <laughs> Groundhog Day every day, and they just kind of do their sad day routine, which is who knows, you know. But I do know that in the younger generation, they all seem to be on the headsets. It's yeah. almost like they were prepared for what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's kind of strange because they just they're just not going outside right now, but they're still hanging out with their buds, and they're still doing all the things that they were before, except going to school and being outside like they once were. Um, but like I said, they, they're treating it like one big giant sad day. And, you know, the schools are starting to get better about giving them work. And, Good. you know, it's, it's just kind of like, you know, how do you push on them too hard? Definitely. You know? And especially in our world too, you know, where my wife's a nurse. So they're kind of, hearing some of her horror stories just because they're in earshot 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, I work at the school that actually the oldest goes to. So he's kind of wondering what's going on. Mm-hmm. And I tell him every day, you know, the school's still there, but it's yeah. going to happen. It's going <laughs> to happen. You're going to get back. <laughs> well, that's good. That's probably something that they would have never thought they'd be excited to hear. <laughs> it's, it's it's tough because I'd imagine it's tough on everybody because you're in each other's space all the time. And I don't think we ever really plan to 24-7 be in each other's space all the time. And No. <laughs> people you need breaks you know and it's it's hard and you know hey yeah I have I actually have an office here at my house but it took about 45 minutes into day one where my husband and I had to get separate space we're like this is not gonna work for the next however many weeks yeah and I find phone calls happen instead of texts now you know but it's 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 all changed you know everything's changed just for right now I'm I'm pretty sure it will all come back Bigger and bigger than ever, but for right now, it's a it's kind of a scary place we're all in, and you know I know with the facility I'm at, there's really nobody here. There's only a skeleton crew, and we're working outside. We're not in the buildings. Yeah. They so, what's one of the first things you're looking forward to doing on the field or out in the community once some of these restrictions are lifted? Um. <laughs> She wish, you know, like out on the fields, we're, we're just kind of managing like this is actually the perfect season, you know, we're getting great weather and nobody's using them. Like I, I always joked about, man, these fields would be great if nobody was ever on them. And here I am. Yeah. So uh, we'll have to make sure that everything's in good place. And uh, the one thing I'm looking forward to is maybe going out to a restaurant and hanging out with other people. Definitely. You know, it's just kind of weird. And, and even like these Zoom, Zoom, Zoom meetings seem to be very popular as well. Oh, yeah. I've done a happy hour. Like, even though I'm pregnant, I've done happy hours almost every night where we do trivia or something fun like that just to see each other's faces. Yeah, because it's 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 tough on everybody, you know, and I know here it's a school and it's going to keep going. And I know at other schools, it's the same thing. And talking with my boss, he's in touch with a lot of the other schools and each one of them has a kind of different game plan. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, they're all believing that they have to manage the fields, not at we're going to have a game today, but just so that way it's not too much to come back to. Definitely. So what kind of advice do you have for other groundskeepers who may have access to their fields right now, even if it's limited, you know, what projects could you say um, to tackle at this time or what advice do you have? I, I would say like, this is the year to go into your areas that are heavily trafficked mm-hmm. and try and make some sort of difference, whether it be that you're aerating very aggressively or trying new seeds, but the areas that you struggle the most with now is the time because you'll have time to you know, grow the seeds you plant and do the right thing. Um, and that's what we're trying to do here because there's areas of the space, like it's a big, beautiful space, but there's areas, there's areas that get a lot of traffic and there's areas that we struggle with all the time. But now, unfortunately, we don't have much traffic. Definitely. Well, thank you so much, Pete. Is there anything else you want to add? Any good words of wisdom to pass on to your fellow groundskeepers? Hmm. I'm not a very inspirational speaker, but uh, <laughs> I'd say just keep your chin up and it's going to get better. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for hopping on the phone with us. This has definitely brightened our day and we're hoping everyone else can learn a little something from it. Awesome, Meg. Thank, thank you so you. much. We'll talk soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye.